This is 27-year-old Dane Owens. Dane is about to be questioned by the police about a homicide that took place on October 3rd, 2016. To understand what led police to Dane, we have to go back to the beginning of the story and introduce you to the victim, 22-year-old Rowena Irani. Rowena was a college graduate who had been living with her parents in Wichita, Kansas while she prepared for her future. She had started dating her high school friend, Dane Owens, shortly after returning home. Dane had been active duty in the military until an explosion in Iraq left him with a head injury and he was forced to go home. Rowena and Dane had only been dating for a little over a month when Dane sent her a letter in the mail. In the letter, Dane told Rowena how much he loved her and how he wanted to marry her immediately. This scared Rowena and she decided to stop seeing Dane altogether because she was nowhere near ready for such a commitment. Shortly after she stopped talking to Dane, her body was found in her parents' home. Uh, any large scars, tattoos? Uh, I got that tattoo. Um, what would you call that? A uh, tribal. Tribal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for scars, that, and then on both uh, shoulders, I have surgery I'm, scars. Surgery scars, yes, sir. What'd you do to your shoulders? Military. Um, I'm very ambidextrous, loose mm -hmm. jointed, and so um, it's easier for me to tear my rotator cuffs and uh, stuff like that. So. That's with ligaments and. Yes, sir, and so okay. infantry just tore it up even more. Okay. When the detectives went to Dane's home to ask him to come in and answer some questions, they only told him that Rowena was attacked and nothing more. Since then, Dane has not asked if Rowena is okay or what happened to her. He hasn't even asked why he's being questioned. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and have him with you during questioning. Do you understand that? Um, I do, and I'm not going to lie, I've never... You know, this is, this whole situation, of course, you know, it's, I mean, I, yeah, it's a situation, um, and I've never been in anything like this, so I'm, honestly, I'm not, you know, 100% sure what I'm, you know, supposed to be doing, you know, everything like that. I mean, I'm going to be honest to the best of my, not to the best of my ability, but I'm, I mean, okay. I'm not trying to hide anything, I just want, okay. I mean, I want us to be honest. So. Well. The, the statement's pretty self-explanatory, don't you think? What, yeah. what does it mean to you? Um, I mean, basically, I mean, to me, it means that, I mean, if I need advice from a lawyer, I guess, I, and that's, I mean, that's all I really, that's all I can really take from it. Like, I have okay. to... It, it essentially says that, and it doesn't essentially, it says, you have the right. I mean, it's your right. Mm -hmm. to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions about what happened today. Okay. okay. And to have him with you during questioning if you wanted to. That would be your right. And I just want to make sure you understand that you have that right. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess how... I mean, you understand the right. I'm not asking you at the moment mm -hmm. whether you want a lawyer or not. We'll get to that part. Okay. I'm just asking you if you understand that you have the right to talk to one mm -hmm. and to have one with you if you wanted to. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess, I mean, I'm, I guess we will go over that too, but, like, I mean, sure. how does that, I mean, do I just say, yeah, I want one, and, I mean, how does that all work? Well, that's just it, and you can tell me right now. If, mm -hmm. if you want to talk to a lawyer before you talk to us, mm -hmm. if that's what you want, then all you have to do is tell me that, and that's fine. Okay? okay. That doesn't change what we do at all other than yeah. whether or not we ask you questions or not at this point. Okay? okay. So that's up to you. That is completely up to you. Okay. Because um, that's the thing. Is, I mean, I just, I just want to be honest about all this stuff. So, I mean, okay. I don't... Well, that's up to I you. I completely understand... What it is. I mean, if I guess I want one later, I can do that, so. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, okay. I, I completely understand that. Okay. With the legal portion of the interrogation out of the way, it's time to move on to see why Dane is being interviewed. All right. Well, Dane, uh, like the officers told you, I think, coming up here, we want to talk about what happened with, uh, yes, with uh, Rowena today. Is it Rowena? Yes, sir. Okay. 
And uh, I get, you know, you've been telling me here the last few minutes that you want to be honest. You want to tell us, you, you know, this is what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm more than happy to sit back and listen. Okay, that's the easiest way. Um, mm-hmm. So, I guess, can you give us a little idea of what happened today? Um, do you, can I do background information? Sure, and sure, feel free. Yeah. Um, well, um, I'll pretty much just kind of just um, start kind of from the beginning or whatever. Um, um, we, we've been friends for five years, a little over five years. Um, we started, um, we've kind of had this on and off dating, wanting to date kind of thing going on for, you know, the past five years, but never worked out, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, um. And the reason why I want to explain some, all this other stuff is it does have a purpose. I'm not just trying to waste time, I promise. You're good. Um. Um, well, we were, we, I mean, we've been dating, and, uh, for, it would have been two months from the 24th of this, of September, it would have been two months, so we started dating, like, July 24th, um, and, I guess the, this whole, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff, I mean, just day after day, I mean, um, getting up every day is just difficult with all the pain and just, you know, I mean, friends getting killed, just the the war trauma stuff, um, and it's not an excuse, but I mean, I'm just saying that's, it's been like that for me, um, I've tried to find help, I mean, I've been, I'm I'm an introvert, so I keep things built up inside, um, I mean, I'm a very, I know this may seem very contradicting, but, I mean, I'm a very caring person, um, I'll go out of my way to help anyone and anything, and, um, um, and so, I mean, when, uh, it was last week, we, um, she was kind of acting just kind of funny. It was really weird. Um, and I was like, is everything okay? Or, you know, what, what's going on? Um, and then, I mean, she just, I mean, basically just kind of said, it's like, uh, I just don't think, um, she's kind of doing the thing where, she doesn't think, you know, it'll work out because of something way, way, way in the future. I'm just like, well, that's doesn't seem logical to me, whatever, okay. Um, and To further explain what his biggest problem is, Dane writes the names of his small group of friends that includes Rowena and her brother Rashad. Once stuff has kind of, stuff has kind of been, I don't know, has been picking up and acting weird for me for about the past month and um, I've been trying to, I mean, asking for my friends, hey, you know, would you want to help me, or, you know, and, um, like, and, and, and specifically those two, I mean, they just kind of leave me high and dry, or whatever, cool, um, and I'm not trying to someone that, and this is how it's gonna, this is gonna sound weird, but, like, so I asked Rowena, I was like, what, what's going on, and, I mean, she was just like, Oh, blah, 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 whatever, and I'm just like, this is the like second time I've just asked you. I'm just clarifying what what's going on. Um, and then I would ask her, I was like, hey, is everything right with your sister? I mean, like, just trying to be normal. I'm not trying to create drama. I'm not trying to harass. I'm not trying to do any of that shit. And so, and he's like, well, do you just respect my relationship with my sister? He can't really tell you. I'm like, I completely understand that. Um. And so then I asked Rowena, um, I didn't even ask her, I, like, the other day, I just sent her a text, just like, because we've been friends for five years, and I was just like, hey, what's going on, you know, how was work? And then she just 
like, right after that, blocks me from everything, and then Rashad's like, you need to just stop talking to her, because, like, she'll press charges and all that stuff, and I'm just like, I just asked her how her day was, like, she never gave me an indication of anything that was like, stop, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be a friend, I'm not, I understand she didn't want to do this, whatever, fine, cool, and, and so then, I mean, I would try and ask, you know, Offshore or Mizba, you know, hey, just to talk, just to vent. And, of course, no, they didn't want to do it. And I'm just like, all right, because I'm just like, all right. So I had no one really to vent to. Um, and then I would vent to um, a couple of my other, I tried to talk to my mom. Because my mom's good friends with all of them, too. Mm -hmm. And... So I would try and talk to my mom, like, hey, I mean, what's, uh, like, she asked me, hey, how are things doing? I'm like, eh, not doing that well. She's like, all right, well, I hope things get better. And I'm just like, well, you, you, know, you could ask and, like, see what's going on kind of thing because I haven't been doing that well. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a breakup, but it's more than, it's not the breakup that really is the problem. Like, I, whatever. I mean, yeah, breakups are hard, whatever. Um, I I mean, I didn't even see this coming. It literally was just blindsided. Okay, whatever. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I ended up drinking a little bit more. I drank, I mean, drinking a little bit more for me is just drinking, like, once. I just drank a bottle once over the weekend. And, um, you know, I, I'm already, you know, my, we got into a car accident, um, I, my car flooded out, you know, I'm having severe back pain, like, just stuff kind of was piling up, piling up, piling up, and I was just like, I mean, I'm, like, I mean, and, and for the longest time, I've still just kind of, like, not know who I am, I mean, I'm trying, to still trying to figure that out, um, and, I mean, so, to kind of get down to today, um, Today didn't happen at all. How I, I honestly don't know what happened. Um, I, I mean, this morning I took some my pain meds. Of course, you know I took a little a bit more than I, I did. Um, Dane admits to taking more painkillers than usual that morning. We can see throughout the interrogation that Dane is still experiencing the effects of the medication. He is constantly scratching different parts of his body, and at one point, when the detectives weren't in the room, we see him nodding off. And I knew that um, um, I had no intentions of hurting anyone because I've never hurt anyone. I don't, you know, at least I didn't do that. Um, and so, I mean, I went, I just went over to her house because I, I knew what time she kind of got off, stuff, whatever. Um, and, I mean, I I thought her parents would be home, too, so I was not like, you know, I knew she was going to be home alone. And, um, and so, I mean, she let me in. I was kind of a little already, because I... First off, you know, I did kind of a no-no, you know, driving kind of under the influence, you know, with my shoulder. Um, and so, uh, and uh, I was already maxed out with everything, and um, I mean, I we just talked for a second, and honestly, like. I don't even really know why, but um, I, I kind of, I just had the gun, and it's not because I was doing, had it for her, I usually would carry one around just because, I mean, I'm just, um, I'm just kind of paranoid like that, um, and, and I, and honestly, right when, I mean, we just, I mean, it just happened so fast, just talking, and 
like I didn't even pull the trigger or anything like it all I remember is it went off and I was just like what 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 just happened like I mean I I don't know what happened. Um, Before Dane's confession began, he told detectives that he had never hurt anyone in his life and he does his best to help those around him. The truth is, when Dane was spending time with his friends, he would brag about his tour in Iraq, claiming that not only did he kill enemy soldiers, he also took the lives of innocent civilians as well. I wasn't trying to hurt her or anything. Um... It went off, and I, I literally just didn't know what to do. I mean, I've, yeah, I mean, I've been in combat and all that stuff, and I mean, I literally just panicked and freaked out because I didn't even like it was. It was just in here, like I mean, I just had it in here, and like it, we were talking, and then like I don't know if like. Because of how, you know, I was already kind of like loopy a little bit. If it just, I was already just, woo, and it, she just made me jump or something or something. I don't know, but I wasn't trying to hurt her at all, and it, it went off, and, and I, I mean, that's, I mean, it's not an excuse for anything. I mean, it's... I don't know. I, like, this whole week has just piled up, piled up, piled up, and... I don't know. I don't even remember it going off, and... It went off, and I just... I didn't know what to do. I care about her, but I know, I mean, as a friend, too, I wouldn't. Dane claims that while he was talking with Rowena, the handgun that he kept inside of his sling suddenly went off. This seems very unlikely, and the evidence found at the crime scene will prove that it wasn't an accident. For now, the detectives are interested in what he did after he fired the gun. I don't know. I mean, what, what happened after the gun went off? Uh... I just, I was just looking, I just saw her, like, it just, she just fell down, and I was just like, I just didn't know what to do, I was like, this is not going to look good, no matter how I do this. What'd you do right after that? Right after the gun goes off, what do you do? I just stared at her. I was just like, well, um, I tried to see what. Did you walk over to her? Yeah. You know, what happened? I just got overwhelmed with emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I tried to. I honestly just. people shot. 
but this is something completely different. And I know this is. And so after I did that, um, I mean, I, I just want, I just, I mean, it felt like for everybody it was, you know, just a couple minutes. And I thought she was dead, and so I just fucking, I just, So not only did Dane not call beforehand and let her know he was coming, he also walked into Rowena's home without knocking. When the detectives asked him why he had the gun with him and why he didn't just leave it in his truck, Dane claims that it was because he wanted her to listen to him. But that's why you had the gun with you, was to confront her so she would listen to you. Is that right? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want to know what you're telling me, okay? The problem with Dane's story is that the police found a bullet hole in a window near where Rowena would have been shot. They also found a bullet casing on the floor a few feet away. The bullet hole and Rowena's wound were both much higher than Dane's sling could have been lifted, which means his hand would have had to been outside of the sling and raised above shoulder height. Also, if the gun had discharged inside of his sling, the bullet casing would have remained inside or at least rolled out onto the floor. The casing they found appeared to have been ejected from the gun itself, and it landed far away from where Dane had exited the room. So did you have your the gun in your right hand? It was just lying next to I the I mean, it, it was in my hand, but when she came around and just startled me, just pulled it. Pulled the trigger or pulled the gun? Yeah. How did you shoot it? It was like with your right hand? Okay. Yeah, and it, like, I mean, I had it like came down and so then when I walked in cause I know well when she pretty much came around the corner she just like jumped and just kinda like freaked and it freaked me out so I went like that it just it was just like almost like a Natural reaction. How many times did you fire? Just once. So, she comes around the corner, you walk in, you have the gun, and you're slaying with your hand. I mean, your hand's holding it, I assume. Okay. And you must have your finger near the trigger. Yeah, I never put it on it, um, just for kind of like the fire muzzle or trigger safety thing. And then it's just like, when she kind of just, I don't even know how we startled each other, but then it just, just goes off. The detectives provide Dane with a replica handgun so he can show them how the accident happened. During the demonstration, Dane struggles to show them how the gun would have fit into the sling, so they allow him to stand up and continue the demonstration. 
if you could, if you could kind of stand up, pretend like right here's the doorway as you're coming in. Mm -hmm. I guess, so you, you step in enough that you can close the door, mm -hmm. and then... So I'm holding it like, like that. Okay. So I close it, and then like, she popped around, and I, sorry, I just, I just don't know what happened, it was just, it was just like that, like, it jerked up, and then it just, okay. my finger just slipped and just... Okay. Okay. Now, the way the way you're showing in there was you didn't have a grip on the gun. Yeah, like I wasn't just because like I'm not gonna walk in there kind of like that. But yeah, like I had it like you had it gripped, but still kind of pointed downward. Yeah. And then and as she came around, it just slipped like I jerked up on accident. Okay. The demonstration proved that Dane was lying. They already had more than enough evidence to charge him with murder, but the detectives wanted to look deeper into Dane's life. As they began looking into his past relationships, they found that when Dane began dating new women, he immediately became obsessed with them. Every relationship he had would end with the other person breaking up with him. The police were able to interview one of his exes to see what dating him was really like. Were you guys together most of that time during? I mean, were there breaks or? Um, I mean, I'd say well, all the relationship. I mean, it was off and on. Okay. Um, and I have this reaction because it was. Um, I would say that I was um, verbally abused during it. Mhm. Mm okay. What? Uh, he told me who I. As far as boys who I could and couldn't talk to, mm -hmm. he um, would pull me away from my friends. Um, he was just very unstable. You never knew what kind of mood he was in. Mm -hmm. uh, one t one day uh, he'd be happy, and and then the next day I did something to make him mad, and I had no idea what that was. Um. Oh, he. Uh, <laughs> He got mad. He was a um, a very good athlete, and I couldn't go to his, some of his football games. And um, well, I thought, well, maybe I'll try out for cheerleading. Cheerleaders always go to the football games, so he wouldn't get mad at me. Well, I made the cheerleading squad, and then he calls me a bitch. Um, that I'm a bitchy cheerleader now. Um, and. Um, it just brings up a lot of pain. Um, yeah. I felt like um, here I was dealing with this unstable, this unstable guy and all his football players thought it was me. And I think back to how hurtful that was, um, that I was just a normal, that felt like a normal um, high school girl. Um, and I was just, um, I don't know, trying to be a good girlfriend, and, um, he was just so unpredictable. I'd do things I didn't know, like, even saying things, um, uh, so it was, I never knew what kind of day I'd get. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, did it just kind of go back and forth, or? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I was the one who finally, this is done. Okay. What brought that on? I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, I feel I feel like even now I didn't have a time in high school. Um, it was just got too much. I was getting, got to the point I was having panic attacks. I was having anxiety. I just couldn't handle the stress. He would say that he was going to commit. In high school, I didn't know what to do with that information. I think he, he said, you can't tell anyone. And uh, the next day, he wasn't at school. So, of course, I'm freaking out. Well, he had an appointment, mm -hmm. and he didn't care to share that. 
I just couldn't do it. I was losing my friends. I was being talked about. I was getting these horrible things said about me by these other friends and boys, and I just, um, I was done. Mm -hmm. And how did you go about breaking up with them? I think I, I think it was on a phone call. Mm -hmm. I just said I'm. I, I don't remember what I said, but uh, I'm. This is over. And my mom actually had to take my phone away that night because he wouldn't stop texting or calling or. They sent cards, anything like mm -hmm. that, any handwritten stuff. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, what what kind of stuff would he say in the text? Do you remember? Oh. I know it's only been about ten years ago, <laughs> eleven years ago. Uh, I can't live without you. Probably, I love you. That sort of stuff. Okay. He ever ask you to marry him? Yeah. Well. Uh, he had a ring. I remember seeing the ring. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, I don't know if it was an actual proposal or if this is going to happen down the line. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, oh, it, oh, it gives me a stomachache thing. Sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. Um, but yeah. Okay. Dane would be charged with first-degree murder, and he would take the case to trial. Prosecution was able to show the jury that the bullet trajectory did not match Dane's statements. They also had Dane's roommate testify that Dane always left his gun at home, further proving that he intended to take Rowena's life. The jury would find him guilty and he received 25 to life in prison. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. Did Dane accidentally kill Rowena or did he plan on taking her life all along?